Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. And I know we've uh, had a few sessions on estate planning earlier as well. But I think some topics you can hear never enough of. So it's always good to have repeat sessions on topics like estate planning, will writing, uh, anything to do with legal uh, affairs and financial topics. I think the more we have it, deeper our understanding goes. So here we are back again on Silver Talkies platform uh, to talk about basics of estate planning. And this time we are doing with our newly onboarded partner, Yellow. We will let you know about them in a bit. So for all those who are joining us for the first time, I will give you a quick intro into peek into uh, Silver Talkies and who we are and what do we do. So Silver Talkies is a community of older adults. So our youngest member is 55 and our oldest member is 96. And we have members spread across 12 different cities and we have city chapters active in Hyderabad, in Bangalore, in Chennai, Mumbai, Pune and Delhi NCR. So if you are 55 plus and uh, your attitude towards life is that you would like to lead an active and independent life for as long as you can. And even when, uh, you know, if you are not able to get out of your homes for whatever reasons that may be, since we follow a high, you know, a, a model where we do physical meetups, do physical engagements, but we also have online sessions like these. So you do stay connected with this very vibrant community of older adults where the intention is to you know to actually promote active aging as a desirable and a viable goal for all of you so thank you so much for joining us and to know more about us and to you know know about the membership plans because the membership is as little as 4000 rupees or 3999 for the entire year which is equivalent to about 333 rupees per month which I'm sure, uh, you know, is not much for being part of a club, a social networking club, where you get to attend many of these kind of sessions. In a month, we have about 15 different sessions that we conduct for our members. We have member meetups. We just finished a big mega annual event of ours called Samvad, where our members participated in fashion show, in dance, in music, in theater. So we had a very gala event, an intergenerational event, where our members shared the stage with college students, professionals, and it was it was really mind blowing. You know, for if I got real, I heard really good feedback from everybody in the audience and on the stage. So yeah, so if you want to be part of such you know activities, and if you really want to try out new stuff, I think Silver Talkies. I can very confidently and comfortably say is the place to be. So do check us out on Silver Talkies website. And coming to Yellow, today we are joined by Aditi Joshi and Nikhil Varghese. They are both from the Yellow team. I will just spotlight both of them while I introduce them. And uh, then I will leave it to them to tell you more about Yellow because I'm very curious why Yellow, why they came up with that name. So I will come to that, but let me just finish with my introductions. So Aditi is head of legal affairs yellow and she is a lawyer with 12 plus years of experience in estate planning and commercial law. Previously she has worked with organizations like Kotak Mahindra Trusteeship, MUFG Bank and Paras Kuhar and Associates Advocates. Her areas of speciality include consulting on will creation and structuring of trust to ensure the smooth intergenerational transfer of assets insolvency protection, estate duty protection, etc. Welcome, Aditi. Thank Nidhi. you. Thank you so much, uh, Nidhi, for the introduction. And we're looking forward to this session. Same here. Same here. Nikhil Varghese, he's the co-founder and chief domain officer of Yellow. Uh, Nikhil is a CA by profession, but he has spent a large chunk of his 15-year career at the two of the big four. Nikhil, what are the two big of the big four? Which ones are those? EY and PwC. Okay, EY and so Ernst and Young and PwC Price Waterhouse Cooper is wonderful, and he's been involved in estate planning, taxation, and M and A transactions. And most recently, he has been exclusively focused on succession planning as the regional head for Southern India at one of the India's largest wealth management firms. 
At Yellow, he's building a team of estate planning experts to provide users with best-in-class support to complement their tech platform. And he's also focused on strategy and finance matters. Welcome, Nikhil. Thank you, Nidhi, for this uh, kind introduction. And we are, like Aditi said, we are very much looking forward to interacting with this group today. Yeah, and I'm glad to have you both. So far, I've been speaking to Niranjan and Anisha. So this is my <laughs> interaction with both of you too. So wonderful. And we have a lethal, lethal combination of, uh, you know, a lawyer and a CA on yeah. this platform. So I think most of the questions <laughs> can get answered in this uh, forum itself. Yeah, wonderful. So before I hand it over to you, I would just like to remind everyone the way our sessions work. Uh, I, you know, while... Aditi and Nikhil would be taking us through their presentation. I would request all of you to type any questions that you may come up to your mind in the chat box. And after their uh, presentation is over, then I will ask the, your questions to them on your behalf. We request all of you to kindly stay on mute during the entire course of the presentation and the discussion. And what we have, uh, you know, a special announcement to make what I kind of initially referred to. So Yellow is our newly onboarded partner. And Rushika will share more details about this partnership and how it benefits our club members uh, soon after the presentation is over. So thank you so much, Nikhil. So let me ask you that question. Why the name Yellow for a for a estate planning and, and a legal affair management firm? No, so it it, it, it went through a lot of, uh, you know, uh, selections of what should be the brand name for this, right? As in this being a topic, we didn't want to, you know, kind of uh, silo ourselves to say a will making platform and say yellow will or whatever it is. Uh, we wanted to keep the brand a little more broad based to say, you know, this is a little bit of a, in a way, a morbid topic. Of course, uh, it's a very important topic, but still viewed in so and so fashion in the country today. Hmm. And therefore, how to make it lighter, brighter and warmer for users to actually start talking about it. That was one of the brand theses for this. Having said that, we also have a cheesy uh, acronym to the word yellow, which okay. is your every little loving wishes. Ah, interesting. Nice. Lovely. Good. So in fact, I must tell you, uh, we have a very interesting conversation coming up next week. Uh, we're actually talking about creating compassionate communities. And one of the major things that we're going to talk about through that discussion is how to normalize discussions around topics like death and end right. of health care. So we actually have, uh, you know, Dr. Seema Rao from Karuna Shreya and uh, Kritika Sharma, who was leading the Death Over Dinner uh, initiative. And she runs, uh, you know, a venture of her own, uh, which is working in the space. So we actually have them as speakers next week. So maybe I'll send you guys also an invite and it would be wonderful. We have had a very, do. very long conversation with Kritika. Yeah. This yes. matter and you know I think that's going to be a very interesting conversation to have. <laughs> Correct. So we are. We'll be more than happy to join in. Yeah. Please do, please do, because we had one discussion about you know a couple of months back at BIC where we spoke about uh, you know both life and death, and in death we had spoken about AMD and end of life care, palliative care, where we had Dr. Nagesh Sima and Dr. Roop Gursahani. Uh, as our panelists and and it was a very interesting discussion so we wanted to kind of you know with the takeaway that I had like topics like death and succession planning uh, I think are very difficult topics for anybody to kind of pick them up right okay. for example I have had conversations with my parents about their financial assets uh, you know or have visited their bank locker to figure out what all do they have and whom do they want to hand it over to but it's not been easy you know I'm like uh, it's difficult to have this kind of conversation with your loved ones because you kind of are hinting towards something which is impending and it's 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 Correct. inevitable right Correct. so so i think uh, it's it's really important that we kind of look at some of these things very practically so that our loved ones at the end of our life do not really have to struggle with uh, you know where you leave your uh, assets interstate and it's difficult to pass them on uh, so I'm glad we are having this discussion today so now I'll hand it over to you both of you and you can take it forward from here thank you so much for joining us thank you and I think that's a good uh, you know uh, conversation to kind of give a segue to the overall context today I think that's a well put uh, way of saying why this is such an important topic and everybody should be talking about it thank you okay so yes a very warm welcome to everyone 
you know, quickly, just a few lines about yellow to, again, give you some context into what we're going to be talking about. Uh, yellow is India's first most comprehensive digital uh, will-making solution. We offer a basket of services. Uh, the very first one is that we have an app through which you can create your own will. You don't need to be dependent on a lawyer. I, I'm a lawyer myself, so I can certainly vouch for the fact. You don't need to run to law offices to get your work done. You can do it at your own uh, you know, convenience and pace. We also have realized that asset transfer in India uh, because of the complexities of laws that we have is a very difficult process. And we do understand that no family should go through uh, you know, such turmoil, especially when they're going through such a tough time, when they've lost a loved one. So Yellow also provides end-to-end -end, uh, asset transfer assistance. So for all your assets based uh, in India, we kind of help you with uh, those related services. So we'll now jump into the presentation and we'll talk about what all we're going to cover. So today's uh, session, we'll talk about the concept, what estate planning or succession planning really means. There are a lot of misconceptions in this space, so we'll clear those out. We'll talk about several estate planning tools which are available, but we'll focus more on wills today because that's the most important aspect. And we'll also talk about yellow. There's a special code which is available, discount code for the uh, Silver Talkies uh, community. So please stay till the end and we'll share that with you. Okay, so, you know, we as Indians, it's ingrained in us to save. We're very good with planning that we need to save for our children, for our grandchildren, etc. But what we're not very good at is understanding the fact that in the absence of, you know, us creating a will, the family goes through n number of issues and n number of hassles. And, you know, in the coming presentation, uh, we'll show you what are those challenges that a family faces. Moving on. Let's start with some hard-hitting facts. In India today, unfortunately, 1,50,000 crores of assets are lying unclaimed. Uh, and this is only financial assets. We're not even talking about real estate. This is mainly because families are not aware at all about the existence of those assets. Also, 76% of the disputes that are pending before the Indian courts today are because of property and family-related disputes. And lastly, if you're lucky, that is if there's no dispute among family members, it takes approximately three whole years to get the whole asset transfer uh, processes and formalities, you know, completed. Now, let's understand what happens, you know, when a person is passing away. See, there are two main methods through which the asset passes on to the next generation. One is with a will and one is without a will. Now, when you don't plan or when you don't talk about how, how your assets should go on to the next generation, the law decides on your behalf. So this means that in case if a Hindu male passing, passes away without writing a will, his mother, his wife and his children equally become entitled to the asset. There's one more challenge. When there's no will, you know, the authorities, that is your banks or municipal corporation, etc. They ask you to produce a number of documents. You need to get these from the court. And these documents essentially specify that who are the family members who are left behind, uh, you know, are the legal heirs. So the whole process of going to court is, you know, extremely time consuming. It's lengthy and it's monetarily also very expensive. Moving on. Now, uh, we'll just uh, quickly take a look at the myths and the facts, uh, post which I'll ask uh, Nikhil to carry on with the uh, rest of the presentation. Now, as a general rule, uh, nomination uh, means that your nominee does not become the owner of those assets. 
your nominee is only a custodian which means that uh, if you pass away without writing a will your nominee only has a right to approach the particular institution collect the asset but not spend it or enjoy it because the legal heirs as per law those are the rightful owners of the asset i'll give you an example if let's say uh, nikhil I, i think yeah so let's say if uh, if if i have a bank account and I, if i appoint my sister as a nominee if i pass away without writing a will my sister can go to the bank claim the amount but can't spend it because my husband and my children are going to be entitled to the amount there's a myth that uh, a will should be made when people are old or unwell but that's not true a will should have been made out of as of yesterday it's very easy to create a will it's very easy to change your will as well a will does not have to be a registered notarized or stamped as per law it's not compulsory registering a will has its own advantages but it's not mandatory as per law there's also one more misconception that everything will go to my husband or wife as it is so why do i need to write a will uh, that's not true because you've seen a lot of family members inherit the asset together uh, also you don't need to be of a particular net worth in order to create a will a will should be made by every single person if they have any asset even if it's one bank account a will is a must you don't lose control over your assets because a very important aspect about a will is that it comes into effect only after the death so until then you have all the right and you have all the control over the asset and you can do whatever with it during your lifetime and lastly making a will is really easy it's convenient and especially with the yellow app it's extremely pocket friendly too nikhil with that i'll request you to uh, take us to the rest of the presentation thanks aditi you know with that uh, some of the myths uh, being uh, busted and uh, you know kind of giving you a better perspective of what reality is here's uh, some of the tools that one could look at from uh, purely from an estate planning perspective today like aditi said we'll focus more on the will aspects of things of course uh, if there is interest around the other topics we can also conduct a separate session on that to begin with let's look at what a will is will essentially is is a document that clearly lays down what are your wishes what are your uh, family members how these assets what are the assets and how these assets needs to be distributed it's a simple document could be a one pager but is it really effective not effective we'll talk about all of that in detail in the subsequent slides right apart from that there are other tools that you can see here trust is one such option where uh, you know in a in a nutshell what a trust means is that you're creating a separate entity wherein you enter into a contract with uh, you know you enter into a contract with a trustee to say that hey let me house my assets in a structure called trust so that my beneficiaries get access to these assets as and when how these assets needs to be distributed based on the instructions that i provide because and trust comes into the picture predominantly where you know your wishes are complex or more sophisticated where it can't be achieved through a will is where trust comes into the picture but having said that there's always a you know question that comes our way saying should i do a trust or a will our answer simple answer is will is a foundation you have to do that there's no option about it trust may be an add on to a will so it's will plus trust and it's not a will or trust right uh, we will not dwell a little much more deep you know in into detail on what a trust means and we'll talk about the other norm you know estate planning tools so the much more popular document that everybody talks about saying hey let me gift my assets to my kids my siblings etc so that it's easier nobody needs to go through the hassles of Uh, you know uh, passing on assets uh, in terms of what as we spoke about the complexities right and therefore let me live gift assets during my lifetime is it a good tool the answer is yes and no if you intend to gift a small portion of your assets during a lifetime it is great it's a good tool to look at but we never recommend gifting all your assets during your lifetime because you must have heard of uh, the case of uh, uh, vijaypat singhania the uh you know uh, part of uh, raymond's group who gifted all his assets to his son gautam uh, son gautam and thereafter now he is left high and dry because he is fighting the case uh, battle before the court to say let me let uh, now i need access to these assets because my lifestyle needs are at stake 
right so therefore it's good to have a will uh good to conduct or transfer assets to a gift but should be very minimal you as an asset owner is is a honest recommendation from our end as estate planners is that you should have control over these assets during your life and only when you are not around is when your families should have access to these assets right the other tool that you see here is uh, uh you know concepts of a survivorship joint accounts usually there's a misconception that if i have a joint account and i'm not around my spouse usually that's a practice that my me and my spouse will have uh, joint accounts and therefore if i'm not around she will have complete access to these assets it's uh, it's not a foolproof idea because joint account again works something similar to nomination which alti spoke about earlier your your interest in a joint account is will again be you know devolved to your beneficiaries basis either you have a will or without a will as per your indian succession law basis your religion uh, gender etc it gets distributed and therefore there's always a uh, gray area there in saying will my uh, surviving joint account holder have complete access to these assets right uh and that this pretty much joint account comes more and this question is more so in the financial account space in a you know real estate space etc it's much very clear that his or her interest in the property is pretty much their interest and the survivor doesn't get access to these properties now you also see nomination as another tool you must be a surprised here saying why is this available here because we have already passed a myth saying that nomination is not a estate planning tool it's only nominee is just a custodian trustee of the asset but still we capture it here because it's a very effective process that one could undertake because having a nomination will ease the overall transfer process when one is not around because once you have a nominee the assets will pass on to the nominee our best case scenario is to have nominee aligned with your will so that the nominee gets access to these assets and as per your will the wishes say that the nominee is also the beneficiary and therefore there's nothing further to question about right with that uh, let's dive a little deeper into will before that a quick case study right because uh, this is more relevant from a, a gift perspective uh, here is a case where mr ravi gifted his son his home to his son suresh with an understanding that he would take care of him during his old age right but suresh neglected his parents causing him distress so mr ravi tried to revoke the gift under section 23 of the maintenance of welfare of parents and senior citizens act usually we call it as senior citizen protection act there's some provisions wherein it says that if you are gifting the assets and if your lifestyle needs or your uh, you know basic necessities are not taken care of you have a right to revoke but there are instances how this can be invoked you need to have the special an uh, aspect mentioned in your gift deed before for this provisions to be invoked at all right uh, therefore he tried to invoke this uh, but uh, unfortunately uh, the court did not agree because uh, this provisions were not specifically mentioned in the gift deed it was a way plain vanilla gift deed within the entire assets were gifted to the son and now he uh, you know the father couldn't kind of revoke this gift deed therefore the important point here is that like i said earlier gifting is a good tool wherein assets go seamlessly to the family but we need to take utmost care in terms of saying how am i protected i know relationships are always uh, good to begin with when money comes onto the table things do change we have seen ample number of cases on these lines and therefore just a good now um, planning with respect to saying if things goes bad is there a way i can get access to these assets that that some one thought and some planning around this is always very important before you kind of take a very quick decision on gifting etc i did speak about vijaypat singhania's case uh, that is also pretty much on the same lines that now the father is kind of struggling with the overall uh, scheme of things on how his basic needs are taken care of uh, you know nidhi did mention about uh, uh, living will or advance medical directive just spoken uh, i'll just spend couple of minutes here not too much because usually there's a confusion when we talk about will they also you know interchangeably consider it as living will both deals with two separate aspects uh the will that we are talking about pretty much deals with how a succession transfer of assets happens post one's lifetime but a living will or a advanced medical directive is a is a concept wherein you are providing a clear direction in terms of how your medical treatments needs to be taken when you are unable to take such calls right uh, essentially to say if you are in an incapacitated state who in your family has the power to pull the plug 
right and it's very important to have these uh, norm, you know uh, appointment or uh, uh, appointing someone to do this because you know it's it's very important because uh, otherwise families are always confusing what you are in your position would you do in this uh, particular scenario if you have already given your uh, clear instruction saying in so and so scenarios uh, it it is uh, i would have done in the same case and therefore it's it's absolutely fine for the family to do it it gives them a peace of mind in terms of going ahead and doing it having said this why we are talking about it uh, until last year or until beginning of this year the whole concept of living will uh, giving it effect to was extremely cumbersome uh, of course it's not so still so easy there are multiple uh, aspects one need to undertake having said that uh, supreme court uh, has made a specific uh, changes or recommended changes and with that the overall uh, aspect of giving effect to a living will has come into little bit in a eased out fashion and uh, and therefore it's something now you could consider but end of the day what we one need to keep in mind is that no matter what you do it's the family who takes a call i think to that extent to make it much more robust i think there are changes which, which needs to happen in this space i won't dwell much more in detail here because there has been conversations on these lines and i maybe the folks who came in earlier are well placed to kind of uh, advise on these lines right just moving on from there on to say today's topic of what is a will why is it important how does it benefit i i i am presuming the you know group here has a broad understanding of saying this is important some of you must have attended uh, you know past sessions on uh, estate planning will making etc so to simply you know kind of simplify this uh, aspect of what a will is will essentially like i said is a simple document right a simple document where you clearly declare your intention on how your assets needs to be distributed post your demise right there are been there have been future in the past uh, uh, situations where farmer has written a will on the bonnet of a tractor and it has been held valid i am right, pointing this uh, aspect is that india doesn't today kind of showcase what is the format of a will a one pager saying that all my assets goes to my spouse is a legally valid document as long as it is witnessed along with two witnesses you sign before two witnesses becomes a legally valid document but is that uh, robust is a aspect that we will talk in the subsequent slides but how does this how does creating a will really help we spoke about this it's a first and foremost important step in the overall estate plan in our minds it's, it should have been created as of yesterday but uh, you know creating as soon as possible or writing a will as soon as possible is a very important step that everybody should take by writing a will you you uh, you know you are you clearly bypass the overall interstate succession uh, which uh, is existing in india which like alti spoke earlier is um, religion specific it is gender specific and therefore government has prescribed various parameters in terms of how your asset needs to be distributed there's nothing wrong in terms of saying is that a, a parameter which should uh, be given effect to or not that's not the point of question is that your wish that is a important point if that is not your wish your wish needs to be a given clear uh, effect to and therefore write a will and plus with having a will in place you don't need to go through various uh, you know departments for the overall claim processes it becomes much more seamless uh, and the overall asset transfer becomes much more uh, smoother to the next generation having said that having a much more robust will which effectively see what we talk about is having a robust asset discovery Uh, or asset register uh, wherein you clearly uh, list out all your assets we are not talking about values here we are only talking about identifiers simply put say i have my hdfc account hdfc account ending 3456 as long as the family can identify saying these are the assets uh, that i held and if i am not around it becomes easy for them to now go start claiming these assets otherwise if this information is not there it's not easily something which can be clearly you know searched in a central portal such facilities are not existing in india today uh, and becomes very difficult also in the future to have such facilities to exist and therefore it's important that one transfer these information to the family so that they can start claiming and uh, effectively ensure what is rightfully theirs is coming their way otherwise you are voluntarily contributing to the pooling or the growing unclaimed assets uh, scenario in india which is Uh, around one lakh fifty thousand crores, which I Aditi highlighted in the beginning, right? We also, you know, having a will will 
in 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 a way mitigate for possibility of family disputes and uh, property disputes uh, and usually the questions come back to us saying won't writing a will create you know kind of instigate disputes the answer is actually no because you are actually clear giving your clear wishes saying this is what i want how my assets needs to be distributed and therefore the clarity is there as long as clarity is there the possibility of dispute is something which becomes very remote and uh, more importantly for uh, you know parents who have who have uh, minor kids will becomes that one document where you can appoint a guardian because you as parents are well placed and or rather have the best knowledge of who your child is going to be most compatible with if should you not be around you can nominate so and so person as the guardian because that's the best person you think will take care of your child right otherwise we have seen situations during covid where young par parents have passed away and you know their parents at both end are fighting before court to say who should get custody of the child so this can be completely avoided you can nominate who the guardian is and that kind of takes uh, precedence over anything else in the future and last but not the least writing a will gives you the power of how who should get the assets or the power of exclusion right or the power of choice to say uh, today under the law like we discussed there's a clear set parameters but you may not want to give uh, all the assets to so and so person it could be saying i want to give all my assets to my spouse but the law says spouse and children equally right therefore that is not your wish your wish could be to say that it needs to go to spouse if both of us are not around let it go to kids right such a clear uh, you know specification on saying how my asset needs to be distributed including scenario saying that we have come across families who have said why should everything go to my family only this this there's something that i need to give back to the society i want some portion of it to go to charity all of it can be given effect to only when you write a will otherwise the set parameters by the indian succession law kind of comes into the picture and gives precedence over anything else because there's no wishes that you have captured now moving on saying uh, you know i did make the statement multiple times earlier saying uh you know one pager saying all my assets goes to my spouse is a is a be legally valid document but is it effective enough the answer is no these are the reasons or the you know, aspects one should look at to make your will fully robust one there should be a specific de declaration by the testator in the will to say that i am writing this will out of my free will uh without any coercion and of sound mind when i'm writing this will and therefore this it's not out of compulsion or coercion from anybody else that i'm writing this will this should be out of my own free intention love and affection that i'm writing this will right second is that you need to appoint beneficiaries appointing beneficiaries will clearly uh, talk about various aspects of saying who the beneficiary identify the beneficiaries also could be identified by uh you know pan aadhar etc or by you know your relationship so that tomorrow there's no confusion saying who is this person who should be getting these assets second have a or rather third have a list of liabilities by law uh, you are uh, assets will be distributed to your loved ones only once all the liabilities are met law says that liabilities takes precedence before assets can be distributed and therefore having a list of uh, liabilities becomes important so that that is something which the uh, beneficiary should be aware of before they can take access to these assets asset list i've stressed enough and more already is that you need to clearly specify the entire list of assets that you have not by values nobody you know will should not carry values is is our you know utmost request but it should have identifiers just to identify so that families have access to these details so tomorrow when you are not around they don't need to run helter skelter they have complete details and they can start uh, uh, you know initiating the overall transfer process having said that the devolution of assets or the distribution of assets post one's uh, demise is needs a little more further care the sim like i said uh, you know earlier your wish could be very simple to say all my assets goes to my spouse right but life is uncertain situations need contingency planning and therefore you know we may we what we clearly say that you should have in your will document is that two very specific clauses right one to say i have listed my assets but what about assets that i may have forgotten because you know that is a very likely possibility we have seen many such scenarios and i may have assets that i may acquire in the future right i may have two houses today i may sell one buy another third one in the future i may have financial assets which could be very dynamic which can change uh, every year or few years and therefore how do i keep uh, to ensure that uh, that changed assets are also covered within my will 
is where we talk about something called as the residuary clause, wherein you give a clear wish saying that these are the assets I have given my specific wishes, but anything else that is not covered, uh, this is how I want these assets to be distributed so that tomorrow, should there be any asset that is not, not clearly listed in the will, your families don't need to carry out interstate succession route for those assets. It's everything covered within the will. The whole idea here should be that you, there should not be instance where your family needs to now step the step into the court uh, doors for some of these asset, assets to be transferred. Your will should be robust to cover all contingency. Second scenario of contingency with respect to distribution of assets is that you would have said all my assets go, goes to my spouse. But what happens if she is also not around? Right? Uh, can we plan for contingency? Because we had a scenario where, uh, you know, one of my client's parents, uh, they had written will in India, uh, husband wrote all the assets goes to spouse and vice versa. But unfortunately, during COVID, both passed away in quick succession, not because of uh, COVID, but due to health complications. But uh, because uh, it was written to each other, it got nullified. Therefore, it was as good as not having a will. And, uh, you know, my client had to, uh, spend about six months in India, uh, you know, searching through the cupboards, etc. Figure out what these assets are, and then go to various authorities to figure how the transfer process should happen. Right. So, therefore, having a contingency plan to say that you know, if my spouse is not around, then it goes to so and so person. It clearly gives direction in terms of saying, hey, if this person is not around, then we, the will has given a clear direction. Therefore, you don't need to still go to the court. The will has already given direction in terms of how asset needs to be distributed. Appointment of executor is a very, very important aspect. We have seen n number of uh, you know wills drafted by lawyers. They've excluded the aspect of having an executor. By law, executor need not be appointed in a will. But that would mean that you need to, again, go back to the court to appoint an executor. Having an executor in a will becomes very important. What is the role of an executor? An executor is a person who gives you know, effect your wishes post your demise. Essentially to say that if these are my wishes, executor is the key person who will now carry out your wishes in terms of how the asset needs to be distributed. And sometimes you may appoint someone as an executor, but the executor may be not around, may be incapacitated or may be out of uh, the jurisdiction and may not want to take up this role. Therefore, again, you don't want a scenario of court uh, situation to come in. And therefore, it's good to also have a backup executor. To say that if person one is not around, then person two will take uh, charge of executor role and person three and so on and so forth. You can have any number of executors, but we recommend at least have one or two backups. So therefore things are much more streamlined. And with that, you know, uh, choice of an executor also becomes uh, uh, a topic that one need to uh, look at saying who should be the executor for small families, nuclear families, your spouse, if she is or he or she is getting the um, uh, chunk of the asset, they, they themselves can be an executor. There's no trouble. Uh, but having said that, if, if it's a complex scenario where multiple, there are various number of beneficiaries, then good to have an independent executor. We spoke about guardian. Uh, will becomes a tool to appoint a guardian for your minor children. And sometimes uh, guardian, even for specially abled uh, family members in the, uh, in the uh, group. And therefore, uh, uh, guardianship is something that comes as a power through appointing a guardian becomes a power through a will and uh, having a backup also is of uh, utmost important because like I said, life is uncertain. That may not be the person who may want to take up this role or may not be around and therefore have a backup in that scenario as well. Appointment of witnesses, uh, unlike other documents where you could have anybody and everybody as witness for a will, I think that should be something or rather we at yellow recommend someone to be who will stand up for your family, who will uh, testify before uh, the court should the will get contested. Uh, the important factor here is that it's always good to take care that your witness is not benefiting directly or indirectly from the will. It's an independent person so that tomorrow, if there is a need for court testifying, need to go to the court to testify, then uh, there is no, uh, uh, you know, the witness uh, uh, testification does not get, uh, you know, watered down because of the interest he or she has in the will. Now, other aspects are uh, uh, something which you may want to consider talking about funeral wishes and signatures, right? Signatures is very important. Every page is good for the testator, the person writing the will to have signatures along with witnesses. Important fact here is that witness need not know the content of the will. 
all that the witness need to under, uh, you know testify before the court is that he or she has seen you sign the document in their presence and they have countersigned it after your signature that's the only role of a witness but like i said the choice of a witness is very important because he or she she should uh, stand up for your family should there be a, a contestment of the will and court uh, testification before the for the will now we spoke about what are the uh, you know uh, uh, aspects that one should consider to make the will robust some of other recommendation that we provide to make uh, the will much more beyond the aspects of basic requirements and seeing what else can be added on to make it fully fully robust is uh, something which we'll try and capture in this uh, slide some of the must have uh, factors is that uh, this is more what the law states is that the person writing the will which is nothing but the testator should be of 18 years or above and of a sound mind and otherwise the will will be invalid asset register and the distribution should be unambiguous Uh, why i say this is that having black and white uh, language makes it very clear otherwise you're leaving to humans to interpret saying what did the testator you know thought think about when when writing this wish right as long as you can keep it very simple you don't need to have very strong legal language uh, layman language is very simple to understand in black and white will really help in in the will going uncontested and uh, you know avoiding any disputes in the future a uh, basic requirement again is that the will needs to be signed by the testator along with minimum two witnesses you can have more than two witnesses but minimum two witnesses to make it legally valid and choice of executor becomes very very important um, again there is no harm in having beneficiaries as executors but in complex asset distribution we still recommend having an independent executor now some good to have uh, you know factors to to be considered while making a will videography uh, when i say videography it's more about reading the content of the will and having it signed along with two witnesses all taken in one single take it can be done at home using your smartphone it's much capable of uh, we in fact had a will drive last week in our office where multiple family uh, 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 members had come to our office uh, got their will done uh, including the entire robustness that we are talking about here and getting the video recording in their own smartphone to my kind of showcase that's a very simple process you can get it done and all that you need is your smartphone you can get a video recording all that you need to be and you know make sure is that the entire reading of your will plus signing plus signing of your witnesses should be one take no cutting the you know file and stitching it together that becomes weak in the court of law why i'm saying this also is that there have been um, uh, you know empty number of uh, Uh, case pro proceedings in uh, uh, various including supreme court plus recent delhi high court ruling wherein family lost the original copy of the will but there existed a video recording and therefore the delhi high court said we can't disregard that there is no will here because there is a will they've lost the copy but a video recording of the person reading the will is already in existence and therefore we should still consider the matter is lying with supreme court should that be a positive uh, judgment it will be a landmark scenario for everybody else because digitally recognizing a will becomes a uh, you know is it will become reality for all of us right now why does video recording help is because now to nobody can contest tomorrow on the fact that is it a forged document is this the actual document is this the actually wishes of the testator all of it goes out of the park because the content of the will is now were bad and spoken by the testator and therefore you can't disregard uh, what the wishes are because that is kind of aligning with the document itself and therefore even if a forged document is presented the video recording becomes a very valid evidence before the court to give actual wishes uh, you know effect to the doctor certificate it's not a mandatory requirement but doctor certificate essentially validates the that the person writing the will is of a sound mind when he or she wrote the will ideal scenario is to have a doctor certificate on the date of signing the will so that nobody get contest uh, that uh, he or she was not of a sound mind and the third again a uh, very hot uh, question that comes our way in all our webinars that we deliver is that should i register the will uh, you know by law registration is not mandatory but uh, especially if you have immovable assets it's good to have registration because unfortunately at the sub registrar level to transfer the property they usually uh, 
you know uh, kind of give uh, preference over to a registered will in many cases we have seen them disregard a unregistered will and saying go get the entire aspects of uh, uh, as if their will is not there or probated etc and therefore it becomes extremely painful for family members to recover a will or rather uh, transfer the assets and therefore good uh, practice to have a registration especially if you have immovable assets uh, in your portfolio now the rest of the points you may think why are we, why am i even talking about it but becomes very important keep your id proofs updated we have seen families uh, who have come to us wherein they have six different permutation combination of their names uh, in their uh, various documents and therefore tomorrow when identification comes to the picture it's saying what is the name that we need to look at right and therefore and this because not because of their error it's also because you have seen voter ids etc being typed out in a uh, incorrect fashion with different typos and what not it's good to align all these documents so that tomorrow if way to if one way to go to the uh, you know various authorities transfer your will will have a certain name and the same name being reflected in your uh, you know identity proofs goes way uh, you know a long way with the smooth transfer of assets otherwise you need to do various other uh, aspects including a newspaper ad etc to unnecessarily you'll complicate the matter before the transfer can really take place because to make the whole process smooth it's good to take stock of how your ids are looking and align it with actual names so that uh, if there's any errors that can be kind of cleaned up and this can be done easily during a lifetime and post your lifetime it becomes very difficult for family members to kind of even do any of these aspects update your will from time to time uh in traditionally everybody thinks that uh, will is a one time affair i do make my will leave it in my cupboard and don't do anything about it in the future we have seen 5 years or 10 years old uh, documents which are completely redundant because your family situations your uh, asset situation would have completely changed and this becomes a very you know document that makes no sense for overall transfer process therefore it's not that you need to keep updating your will on a regular basis at least what you need to do is on a at least on a year on year basis have a quick check on your will to say does it reflect your current uh, you know asset or family situation including the aspects of saying you have appointed an executor is the person around witnesses etc do a quick sanity check if there's no changes nothing to be done if there's a uh, you know substantial change that one need to undertake then it's a good practice to go back and update you and last but not the least keep your loved ones informed about the will uh, you know we have seen uh, families being very secretive about this document of course sometimes family dynamics can get tricky and you may not want to talk about it at least inform your executor in that case saying that this document exists because if it no if it's not then family will assume that there's no will and they go through the entire you know rigorous or the uh, you know expensive and uh, time consuming process of asset transfer and more importantly your wishes are not given effect to it's good to have family members to aware, be aware of it and therefore uh, your wishes are fully given effect to and more importantly families have complete access to the information of what the assets are and therefore they what is rightfully theirs can be fully recovered i have not covered it here but more importantly more like a pro tip is that we have seen also family members uh, uh, done the will and uh, uh, save it in or uh, you know store it in a bank locker please do not do that because it becomes a chicken and egg situation for the bankers to even open the uh, locker they will ask for a copy of the will therefore it's good to have it at your home at a cupboard some somewhere where it is uh, you think it is safe and more importantly if you can give copies to your executor or your fam family members if if the conversation can be open ended it's great to have this conversation with everyone so that they everybody knows what your wishes are and you can avoid a uh, family conflict in the future um uh, moving on i'll, I'll spend uh, uh, two three minutes here uh, with respect to what yellow is uh, i aditi did speak about it what we provide as a solution is that uh, our experience that we have gained in the last uh, combined experience of 50 plus years in this space we have tried to kind of provide this in a tech platform which is 100% legally valid user friendly uh digitally fully secure and uh, because it's a digital platform you can create a will on your own and update it on a very seamless fashion having said that uh, should you require any you know legal help or uh, uh, want to talk to an expert lawyer etc we have enough team of lawyers who can help you with the overall transfer process that said uh, we don't stop here we want to continue with the family in their entire journey to say that during their life 
create the hygiene and if you're not around and uh, your loved one needs our help, we also act as a single window solution to help with the entire asset transfer so that you don't need to spend time and effort around this. We know the space extremely well and we help you like a doorstep delivery service for the entire asset transfer process. I'll skip few other slides. Uh, you know, uh, needless to say, we do the entire uh, uh, you know uh, legwork with respect to asset transfer. The only caveat is that we are good at India assets. We don't deal with offshore assets. Uh, Pan India, no matter uh, what nature of the asset, we can help you with the overall transfer, and of course during life, uh, help you with uh, will creation uh, Pan India through our tech platform or uh, offline. Our plans essentially are something which you have, have captured here. Uh, you can create your will in a very pocket friendly manner because it's a tech enabled platform. Uh, but having said that, you get a top notch quality document your way at this pricing. Uh, option one, which we have captured here for creating your will essentially is a fully DI, you know, do it your own self kind of a model where you can create your will at as low as $8.99. But if you need lawyer assistance, et cetera, you can look at one triple nine plan wherein uh, you also get to create your will and also have uh, two lawyer calls uh, wherein you can get all your doubts clarified. If not, get the peace of mind saying that I've spoken to the lawyer before I got my will in place. And because it's a platform, you can always now do incremental changes and create your will in a seamless fashion. Beyond this, we also help you with registration, et cetera, Pan India, and that's something if it's, that is needed. We can help you with those aspects. Uh, yellow smart which we talk about post demise asset transfer here we again have two options if you have lost a loved one uh, we can help you with the situation understand what the complexity is and give you a quote if it makes sense we can help you with it uh, otherwise uh, if um, you can also be a subscriber with us wherein should something happen to you we help you with your family with the overall asset transfer with zero out of pocket from their hands we need to take the entire professional fee on us uh, as a like in similar to insurance, so that uh, uh, you know your family is fully protected with the asset transfer process. Some of the large organizations that we work with, I'll skip this. Uh, with that, you know we can open to uh, questions. Yeah, thanks, Nikhil. Can we stop sharing the screen? I'll do that. Yeah, and I would actually, before I jump into the questions, I would bring in Roshika to kind of talk, tell everybody about what our tie up with uh, Yellow is all about. Roshika, are you here? Yes, yes. Good evening, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the session today. Uh, so I would like you all to know that we have tied up with Silver. And if you log on to your app, like this is only for Android users as of now. So if you could just open the Silver Talkies app. Uh, so once you go into the Silver Talkies app, you have the three lines, which is next to the stories. Uh, and you have the offers and deals page. So once you click on that, you need to find money matters. And once you click on money matters, all the offers that we have with yellow, you can browse through them and you can see which one is suitable for you. And you can click on that offer. And we have all the details mentioned, the terms and conditions, how to go about, uh, you know, uh, claiming the offer it's a very simple process uh, you can just go through it and we also have a 15 percent discount for our silver talkies member in case you have any doubt please feel free to reach out to uh, any of us at silver talkies and we will help you with it thank you rashika okay nikhil i have a list of questions here which came in and I'll start from the first one that came. First question was from Gargi. She really wanted to know, how does will writing really work for a single woman with no kids? So the extent, it's more of extended family, like with sisters, nieces, and nephews. So what would be your advice for someone, uh, you know, who has that kind of a family structure? See, um, uh, like I say, you're not worse off writing a will, right? Because... Again, you're casting your wishes. Your wishes could be to say it goes to your sister, it goes to your nephew, niece, whoever it is. You need to still say what assets goes to whom, right? If not, your sister, nephews, etc., will have to still go to the court or subregister, etc., to say this is my family structure. They have to get a family tree, succession certificate before even they can start the overall transfer process. And more importantly, like, like what we stressed earlier, is that do they have complete visibility of what assets that you own? 
if they don't have that it becomes very difficult for them to even claim those assets and it will go into the government kitty which is happening today so uh, i hope that answers the question i think it does and i'm sure gargi if she has a follow up question gargi if you have a follow up question please do feel free to type again yeah so maya has a question around living will she wants to know if there is a format for writing a will living will the end of life instructions the funeral wishes and everything else that you were talking about so is there a format available or is there anything else that one should be aware of so couple of things here i think it's combined I like mm -hmm. the point that i uh, you know mentioned earlier usually living will is combined with live will right if i want to make a clear distinction will is for asset transfer living will for today's conversation i will not say living will we'll call it advanced medical directive or amd that is what talk talks about how should your end medical treatment be undertaken during end of life and that is something which is covered under living will but uh, a normal conversation of a will where you're looking at how your asset needs to be transferred post your demise for that like i said there's no format uh, um uh, you you can google you'll get a format but we usually we don't recommend that because you're trying to fit into a format which is uh, put out there it may not be really suiting your specific need what is important is that every family's requirement is totally different and that needs to be fully customized right and therefore uh, that's the reason why we came out with yellow to say uh we understand that there is complexities of course we can't un, un, uh, you know kind of address 100% of the population but can definitely address 80% of the population where certain parameters can be easily uh, tailored and therefore the way we have gone about with our app is or the platform it's that you don't talk about anything from a legal aspects all that you need to do is talk about yourself talk about your asset scenarios talk about how these assets need to be distributed and a well draft rob done otherwise you'll always be at the back of my mind is that a good document that i've created with and uh, they pulling out a format and delivering it so funeral wishes would be part of the will document and not the amd absolutely uh, amd only talks about how my uh, end of life medical treatment needs to be taken care of funeral wishes is something which can be part of a will but i'll, I'll let me also talk about it practically right will is something which you always place hands on it post everything is done after is over yeah right so therefore important aspect is communication we need to say we need to have this open ended conversation and i think your next session is pretty oh, much okay. apt here to talk about you no know, this is not something which you need to uh, be sh shying away from it's a aspect that you need to celebrate life and therefore it's also your wish to say how i should be Uh, my last uh, rights how that needs to be taken care of it's something which you need to communicate with your family right no very well said so uh, mr jambunath want jambunathan wants to know is yellow working as an executor and offers trustee service as well so uh, we do on a boutique basis render services with respect to trust creation trust you know we don't act as trustees we uh, help families create as trust structure having said that executor and trusteeship is little different uh, for for trust is where trusteeship comes into the picture for executor we don't act as trustees as of today uh, but what we provide as a post demise uh, service that is yellow smart is essentially a, a you know a arm and leg for the executor you can appoint a family members who you trust the most to be the executor but the executor need not step foot outside of the door we can do the entire run around on behalf of the executor to do the entire asset transfer and that's the service that we are rendering so that is part in of actual we don't act as executors but we support the executor in all the activities okay and uh, so your uh, last slide did not talk about fee for the yellow smart service so i'm guessing that's case to case basis it's on a case to case because we need to see how the uh, complicated uh, what is the complexities yeah. and but if you are a subscriber the subscription fee is also uh, depending on age like insurance mm -hmm. okay can you just elaborate a bit more on that how is it age related like how does it so work? so see there is end of the day we are talking about a scenario so two scenarios right uh, scenario one is that to say if uh, if an event is uh, uh, you know happened and you want us to help you with the transfer then we assess what the complexity of the work where are the assets situated what are the document needed is it with a will without a will 
with nomination, then, then you understand what the complexity is, then give a quote, right? That's more time and effort based. But having said that, uh, you could act as a, or rather you can pick up our subscription plan, which is yellow smart uh, you know, subscription, wherein it starts from 21 and goes up to 65 years. It's like life insurance, when life insurance, uh, uh, they, there's a cutoff of 65. Doesn't mean that you can't be an active member. If you've taken this plan at 65, you can continue to be an active member thereafter. You lock in a, at a particular value when you start at whatever that age is, right? This, this is essentially going down to what is the mortality risk for us to undertake these services on behalf of your family. Why we are doing this as an age-based uh, uh, module is because once you're an active member and something should happen to you, God forbid, we undertake the entire transfer process without your family need to spend anything on professional fee. We take the entire uh, coverage on behalf of the family and therefore they don't need to spend anything. We do the entire runaround on your family's behalf to ensure the assets are transferred for your family members. And that's why it's an age-based uh, uh, subscription model. And it's an annual subscription plan? Annual subscription. Okay. And so you, at the age of 50, if you have started a plan, you've locked in a, a, a price and that continues uh, until uh, the event arises. Okay, got it. Okay, so Lalita has a question asking, can we make two different wills for two different assets? Yes and no. Uh, uh, yes, from a theoretical standpoint, no is more a practical recommendation because uh, if you have multiple wills, then what takes precedence over the other, all those questions come into the picture unless it is written in a nice fashion saying that this is a specific will only for this asset, this and other specific will only for the other asset. If your intent is that asset one needs to go to uh, you know beneficiary one and asset two needs to go to beneficiary two, you can just have a simple one simple document wherein you talk about two assets and give your specific wishes. It's absolutely fine to do that unless your intent is totally different. If you have a how form, about how about someone who may have uh, assets internationally as well? Does that require a separate will or can then be accommodated in one will? Great question, and this is something which we also get often as uh, you know questions at uh, various sessions. Is that again uh, theoretically you can have one will for all your global assets. Practically, it's an execution nightmare. Why it's an execution nightmare is because if you have created a will in India with India assets and say US assets, for US to give effect to this will, it's an Indian will. Hmm. Why should they respect that will? Which would mean that they'll say prove this will in India in Indian court of law. Once it is proved, that proof document now needs to go to US. Again, be proved in the US before any asset transfer can happen and vice versa. The will is written in US, the same process needs to be undertaken in India. Should you have two separate wills, one for Indian assets, one for US assets, both can run parallelly and asset transfer happens at a much faster pace. Okay, so ideally it should be two different as per the geography where it has it is located. Absolutely, absolutely. Got it, thank you. Now the next question from Mr. Ganesh is, what is an ideal choice for witnesses? Can it be friends or relatives? Yes, friends, relatives. Uh, like I said, somebody who you trust, somebody who you think will stand up for the family is, is the right choice of witness. Um, definitely not someone who benefits out of the will. And uh, usually, again, there's more from probability. It's good to have a younger age to witnesses than a uh, uh, witness of the same age. But not, no hard and fast aspect here. You can always amend your will should an unforeseen scenario arise. You can always go back and amend and say, hey, are my new witnesses. Okay. Now, another interesting question is like for many of them, the children live abroad, right? So if, if, if you in your will have left your assets for children who reside internationally, is it difficult for them to get hold of the assets? Very, very difficult process because remote being remote becomes a painful process for the whole transfer process, right? Mm -hmm. Which effectively would mean that, uh, you know, especially again, I'll talk about two aspects separately from a procedural aspect, uh, especially for removable assets, etc. There is a, there may be requirement for them to be physically present here to do the transfer process. Of course, you can give POA and other ways to kind of avoid those, but becomes a practical nightmare and that's where our yellow smart service becomes very handy in fact today we are help i can give one example where a uk based uh, family whose grandmom passed away in Napsari, we are helping with the overall transfer without them to even travel to india 
with various checks and balances to be put in place, who should get the POA. We don't take any of those approvals. As long as the family fact patterns help, we kind of uh, provide those services, right? But having said that, for them to individually do, it's a practical nightmare. The example that I quoted, this was way before I started Yellow, where uh, the client of mine in my erstwhile avatar, he had to be in India. He was a, in a top role in one of the tech companies in the US. He was in India spending six months to get a clarity of what the assets are. Mm -hmm. Right. And thereafter go to court to get a probate, etc. It, it was a, he spent good amount of time and you know effort in India to do this. And uh, he was like, had you started this services earlier, I would have just offloaded all the work to you. And I would have been peacefully sitting in the US doing my work. Right. So how easy or difficult is it to take it up on anybody else's behalf? Like, you know, uh, tackling or dealing with the authorities and things like that. How how difficult is it or how easy is it? The financial assets becomes, uh, it's more about having that right documentation in place and mm -hmm. then you know, following up with them, right? Uh, when I say right documentation, some of it will meet uh, specific um, notarization in the offshore jurisdiction because the person is signing in a country outside of India and apostolization, all of those formalities need to be put in place and you can have a representative represent person representing in India to have these things in place. So a specific POA with that, a power of attorney in, in that respect, we can kind of take care of kind of financial assets. For real estates, also you can give a power of attorney to say, a specific power of attorney to say, what are these uh, powers that one has with respect to transfer of assets? Uh, usually, uh, you know, given effect to by sub office, as long as the power of attorney is executed in the right fashion. It can't be on a you know simple paper saying uh, Nikhil will be the power of attorney holder for my assets for undertaking these transfers. That won't be accepted. Your power of attorney needs to be first executed in the country where you are. Uh, take it to the embassy there to get them to validate saying this is I've seen this power of attorney executed before me. Then that power of attorney comes to India, stamp it, register it, and thereafter is when you can give in, can give effect to. Okay. But of course. You don't need to do all the run around, run around in, in the offshore jurisdiction, something you, you may want to do it. In India, if uh, providers, service providers like us can do the entire run around with, res with respect to all those uh, formalities in India. Got it. So here is another question about updation of will, since you did speak about it a few times. So is updation of will from time to time required or the residuary clause is sufficient? Will, will it suffice? Technically, the residuary clause actually takes care of it. Why we still recommend updating the will is that, uh, you know, your asset register is a very key component of your will, right? Uh, for us, uh, will is a means to an end. Asset register, we give much more priority over everything else because that is the key data that is, uh, that is required for a family to understand that what assets I need to recover. So if it's a small change in the asset register, we don't want you to go back and update your will. But when there's substantial change, it's good to go back and update your will. Now, what is substantial change? Uh, for instance, if you have, uh, say, you are you have a uh, wealth manager, just say Kotak as an example, where you have underlying mutual funds there. That mutual funds can be changing every now and then. But what if your wishes are to say that all my assets under Kotak goes to my spouse, then it doesn't matter what happens at the mutual fund level. Mm -hmm. Because at Kotak, we know what the assets are and therefore assets easily get transferred. But if you have given specific wish to say, under Kotak, I have 10 mutual funds, five mutual funds of this goes to my spouse, other five goes to my child. Then if there's a rejig that happens there, it's important to go back and update. Yeah, got it. Now, uh, you, you did mention about how one should not uh, store their will in a bank locker because it would require another process to prove that the uh, will is legal and valid. Now, Mr. Jambunathan has suggested that the will can be saved in a digi locker to avoid any loss. What is your opinion of that? It's a you can save it there. Nothing wrong, but sometimes uh, what what we are talking about is original will, right? End of the day, at some instances, you need to still showcase your original will for asset transfers to happen. And mm -hmm. therefore, DigiLocker is a way to store. It's it's fine. We are also linked with DigiLocker. Eventually, you will see yellow also appearing as one of the folder in DigiLocker to kind of pick up your will. Having said that, uh, 
you know good to have copies of this or where the original stored is very important it's a good backup uh, if you have registered your will you family also have an option to go pull up the registered will once you're not around to get a original document from the sub registrar's office that is also a possibility we have done this for multiple families where they have lost the copy of the will because family is aware of the fact that there is a will important aspect is to make them aware that there is a will and you need to give effect to this but has it ever happened because i think many a times will related discussions do not happen because of you know expectations of family feuds right Correct. uh and probably that's why they you know kind of lie in the house unnoticed or unrevealed so uh what's your advice in situations like that L no i i kind of touched upon this earlier they, there are two ways right if family dynamics are great it should be an open conversation within the family saying i am making my will you don't you you may want to know the content or you can say i am not telling you the content of the will but if i am not around your will is my will is here you can go access it we have made some of these tech uh, technology aspects easier we can save the location etc in our app that's a different aspect altogether but practically speaking you should they should be aware of it or they can say he, so and so person is my executor go to he or she a copy of the will is there and i'm not around you can start transferring the assets on that basis best case scenario second scenario is where you don't want to bring up a conversation tomorrow resulting into a broad conversation of saying why so and so person is getting this asset you don't want to get into all of those janjat don't talk about it at least let your executor know about the existence of the will more importantly if you are appointing somebody as an executor take a consent of the executor saying do you will you act as my executor as well right because you don't want that such a person tomorrow to say i didn't know this role exists i don't want to take up this role. right very important aspect again back to the point is that have a backup so that if such a situation arises you still have a backup but good to have a conversation with the executor to say are you willing to take up this role and in scenarios of these uh, uh, aspects where you know family dynamics are tricky Im you know inform the executor that this is where the will is maybe give a copy of the will to the executor so that tomorrow when you're not around the will comes to light and your wishes are given effect and i think what one needs to remember is if you at any point in time update your will give an updated copy to your executor <laughs> right okay so gargi absolutely goes without saying <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Okay, so Gargi has a follow-up question. She had earlier asked about being a single woman with no kids. She's asking if all my three investments are in FD and will to three beneficiaries. How do they access the FD? Actually, FD is a uh, great question uh, because the question is, I'm presuming what uh, you know uh, uh, is being asked here is saying that FD could say the maturity is five years hence. So what happens to it? Should I continue in the FD and then break it? or should we break it in between before the uh, beneficiaries get access to it uh, two three things can be done here one with the will you can go to the bank and change the uh, fd holder to the beneficiaries all three beneficiaries you can say whatever is your uh, uh, you know break up saying jointly which would mean that all equally or specific uh, percentages can be assigned or uh, the beneficiaries on its uh, maturity usually today the way the banking world functions is that on maturity the fd goes to your savings account or it is auto renewed right depending mm -hmm. on what the situation is you need to still inform your banker and say this is where it is once it's matured transfer it so that you don't want any charges for early uh, premature closure of the fd i think here the question could also be that you know say once i've passed on and my i still have some fds continuing right and while i may have willed them to uh, you know some family members how can they actually get access to those fds which are there with the bank so it's like i said you either change the owner today mm. i am the fd holder and i can change the fd owner or holder to the beneficiaries usually it's a very cumbersome process at the banks not all banks access usually you wait it out and once on maturity transfer the proceeds to the beneficiaries so that is post demise that's how post demise it, post demise, yes. post -demise uh, and uh, then the proceeds gets distributed okay gargi i hope that answers your question uh, jyoti has a question can husband and wife make a joint will sure so uh, 
again a great question uh, can joint will be done answer is yes uh, do the, at yellow do we recommend the answer is no the re why we don't recommend here is because joint will becomes very very restrictive because usually you think of joint will and you have joint properties saying that if, if uh, the husband is not there or spouse is not around uh, how these assets is to be dealt with what a joint will comes with a limitation is that when one person is not around you can't now amend your wishes hmm. right it becomes stuck you will be stuck there to say that this is how we agreed jointly and this needs to continue why this is important is that dynamics change at family level uh, when both of you are around you know things were hunky dory everything you you would, you would decided that assets goes to my children in a nice fashion if tomorrow things change is you know to say that uh, you know it's it's more about behaviors right maybe you want you've decided now to not give any assets to your children and say i want to give everything to charity for whatever reason or to say my proportion needs to change for uh, situations where one child is doing extremely well the other child is not doing so well probably i need to support the other child much more than the child one and therefore the change is something which becomes very difficult in a joint will good to always have two separate wills you can mirror your wishes to say that all my assets to go to my spouse and what happens if my spouse is not around similarly spouse also can write a mirrored will so mm -hmm. that when both of one of you are not around that wish is kind of given effect to and post that you can have your wishes kind of stated on saying how those assets need to be uh, kind of devolved or uh, distributed when you are not around it becomes you you will have flexibility nothing wrong to write a joint will if you don't want flexibility joint will is great if you want flexibility for your wishes joint will is not a good answer so tell me this is residuary clause uh, the, the residuary will is it similar as codicil are they referred are they used interchangeably no no so codicil is an add on document to your will okay. to say that hey my will is xyz but i want instead of my house one going to child one i want that house one to go to child two mm -hmm. right so this is it's a small modification to your existing will it's like an amendment document codicil is an amendment to your existing will Okay. Right. And residuary residuary clause, residuary clause is to say what uh, the way we have constructed the residuary clause to, is to say if I have missed out any asset, how should I deal with it? If I acquire assets in the future, how do I deal with it? Because that assets are not listed in your will. You have given specific wishes for each of the asset. These assets are not listed. If you don't, then for these assets specifically, you need to you need to go through the interstate succession route. Okay. So if I understand correctly. So you said codicil is more of amendment and residuary clause is more for addition for any new assets that you may have acquired assets, after, you've written, after you've written your will. Correct. Absolutely right. Okay. Now, I think I have a couple of questions which are similar, which people want to know. Do your annual subscription plan on your execution services, uh, do they cover Pan India? So people who are in Chennai, Pan Kolkata, anywhere they can use these services. We have 1,000 plus agents, Pan India, to help you with the overall transfer. It's a combination of CAs, lawyers, and uh, proper document handling guys who are good in this space. We have, uh, you know, have a strong empanelment uh, process to get this on board. They help you, uh, and of course, you don't need to deal with each of them individually. You only deal with yellow, and we do the entire backend to ensure your asset transfer happens. We do Pan India. Like I said, the only limitation is that we don't help with offshore assets. And something which I missed talking about in the earlier slides is that we don't help. The coverage is more to do with normal transfer of assets. If litigation, etc., comes into the picture, that's a much more tedious process, and that'll that'll either you can appoint your own attorney. Or we can help you with on those lines at an additional price. Okay. Mr. Jambunathan wants to reconfirm that you mentioned that the maximum entry age for smart plan is 65 years. That's what right. it is. That's right. right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, GT has a question. She wants to know do registrars have a copy of the will if it is registered? Is it stored away? Yes. yes. Okay. And is it so like when you said they can be pulled up? So I'm guessing you get a number. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So what happens is that technically speaking, even if you don't have a number, if you know which sub registrar's office, you can go say, I am so and so person. I know there's a will here. Mm -hmm. And therefore, uh, can I get my parents will a copy of it? Right. It becomes extremely painful, but you can still retrieve it. Having said that, if you have a copy of it, it becomes much more easy. Having a copy of the will. Yes. 
and then coming from a sub registrar which is a sub registrar you know signed off document is equal into an original will okay so mangla has a question if the house well, you know if she wants to donate her house to a charitable institution uh, should that will be registered as well and is it a complicated process ideally it uh, you know it's always recommended to register it uh, because immoral property is in, under the question uh, is it a complicated process uh, depends on who is helping you register it uh, if you were to do it on your own it's a extremely painful process uh, i know th- sometimes this is not something which everybody like but with uh, some additional charges paid to the agents there you can get this done in a much more smooth smooth more smoother fashion you just need to spend about you'll exactly get which slot what time slot you need to come in you'll spend about half an hour one hour there and you'll be done with the entire process you'll be out with no uh, hassles mm-hmm. okay uh, rustam has a question he's asking do you support individuals who want to contest a will that might have been made without a noc from the close relatives who might have a claim on ancestral property see uh like it's more of a case of a litigation uh, yeah we don't uh, you know that's not our forte we help you with uh, asset transfers etc you need a reference for a litigation we can give you a reference to the li- right law firms depending on the jurisdiction we can uh, you know give you a couple of references you can take a your own diligence make your own diligence and kind of take a call saying who should you go on to go with we don't help you with this that's not our forte you need a proper litigation team legal team to do that absolutely absolutely yeah. jayashree is asking does an annex annexure work instead of updating i think that's the part that we were talking about uh, yeah it, it all depends on how you draft it now annexure how do you know that that's the right annexure mm-hmm. right uh, and again uh, if you look at from a traditional fashion updating a will is a painful process uh, platforms like ours updation becomes extremely painless right you, if you have one asset just add the asset generate uh, click a button you get a new document just need to sign it and execute you know along with two witnesses becomes a, another legal version of the or legally valid document it's not very cumbersome in the traditional method you start the entire process all from the start scratch again right and that is not what you need to do and therefore updation becomes uh, much more seamless, seamless but to answer your point can you do it with an annexure uh, it depends on how you have executed your will the right language needs to be there if you have registered it becomes extremely difficult because your annexure is part of the registered document now you have a different annexure right so it's not a right way to go about uh, a very a shortcut way to address but i i would not recommend having it on those lines okay now uh, there's a question about that is it necessary to list each mutual fund and each fd when you're listing down your financial assets in the will again great question uh, i gave an answer for the mutual funds earlier uh, if you have your mutual funds directly purchased from fund houses then it's it's, it's absolutely good you know important to you know kind of list it out but if your house purchases through a distributor where have you have an a distributor account or a you know advisor who is providing you have an advisor account like i said kotak is an example i have or whoever it is right could be your uh, uh, you know wealth manager you can have the wealth managers account saying that all my assets in un- underlying wealth as- assets in this uh, particular account needs to go to so and so person including say shares also is a simple example if i have a zeroda account saying all my shares in this zeroda account needs to be distributed in so and so fashion then you don't need to list it out technically right but having said that if your wish is that individual shares needs to be given specific wishes then it's good to list it and like i said sorry uh, on the aspect if these assets are purchased individually hmm. if you have purchased say uh, um, uh, mirai assets mutual from from mirai assets directly without any linkage to any bank then it is uh, important to list those assets similarly for fd uh, if you have all the fd with hdfc you can also say my bank account and all its linked assets needs to be distributed in so and fashion then you don't need to even list your fds because when you go to the bank when you say i have so and so account all the linked assets is automatically popped up the idea mm-hmm. here is to get access to the assets not about uh, you know making this uh, elaborate list the elaborate list is important so the families know but as long as you have given 
data points so that families don't miss out any assets it's good enough in fact i was about to actually you know ask you a follow up question on that the fact that the families may not always know what is the exact extent of my financial assets like i you know my parents may have a bank account and they may have multiple linked entities which i may have no clue about given right. that isn't it always better and ideal to spend some time and actually list down all your financial assets to cover all bases absolutely you you absolutely right that exercise is very important you know a platform like ours also give you uh, you know cues to say have you seen these because we have 40 plus asset categories when you go through those asset list you will suddenly have a light bulb moment saying oh actually i have an account and so and so i have a recurring deposit with so and so i have a post office account and so and so a uh, post office right. then you go back and kind of pick pick up your files and see hey where is this assets and you kind of start filling in those assets right but like i said sometimes we have seen uh, you know uh, clients come our way who have 20 fds mm -hmm. so i can't sit in this but it's linked to one bank account and these fds also have the same uh, you know psychology of a mutual fund which you could change fds on maturity usually they say auto mature Hmm. auto in uh, you know uh, renew into the new fd right which would mean that fd numbers change so if it's linked to a specific specific bank account if you go to hdfc bank as an example because all these are linked to your client id or customer right. id right as soon as you say so and so person is not around all the assets become accessible for the relationship manager and they tell you these assets are there and that's practical and but then in that case should you be mentioning the customer id for each of your bank accounts Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because yes. how do I? So know? even even yeah. if you don't have a, I, I'll be very practical, right? Even if you don't mention, if your account number is there, that automatically throws up the customer ID at a bank level. True. Well, one of the things need to be. If mentioned. you go to the idea here is to something needs to be mentioned, and that's what we capture in the bill also. You can capture either customer ID or you can capture your bank account number. Yeah. With you that, literally. Say all my yeah. You can't just say my HDFC account. you know all assets related to that go you you need to give record of which account number or you know some details Absolutely. so that you know Absolutely. what it is where it is once you have the account number you can say all underlying assets right. here or linked assets here needs to go to so and so for person it's absolutely fine got it yeah so now uh, there are a couple of questions for mangala who had earlier asked the question about uh, you know the donating of physical property she wants to know that do you help with the registration of the donation properly absolutely now if it's uh, you you, you uh, i i just want to address both scenario is it uh, donation during life or donation post life right mangala yes. yeah you can yeah she is she... i can address both scenarios ah, i think do. audience yeah. will be happy to hear this as well donation during life would mean that you are simply doing a donation today you are transferring to the charitable trust and that that's a simple registration of the property in the name of the charitable trust if you can de give details identify who the person is if you have complete clarity there it's just a matter of going to the sub register and getting it done depending on the jurisdiction we can help you pan india that is something which we can support you with the donation post post some one's lifetime is more done through your will hmm. right and that is again capturing specific wish to say that this immovable property will go to abc charitable trust that is something which you capture in your will today and register it so that tomorrow when situation arises your executor will give effect to this and at that point we can help them with the overall transfer process got it now i think the question is about your yellow smart services given that it has a maximum entry age so uh, age limit the question is how should a person above 65 years start this process we we you know it it becomes suddenly the numbers shoot up drastically high and uh, you know you will start questioning saying why such high amounts right and that's why we have kind of avoided and the same logic as uh, life insurance because mortality rate uh, is pretty high at about 65 and therefore we have kind of avoided it what we can assist families with is that when the situation arises you can inform your family members uh, about yellow smart we help you with the transfer process at that point in time and also what we do proactively is that in our if the will is generated through yellow we also recommend users to you know kind of uh, notify their executor beneficiaries about the exist you know existence of the will which would mean that 
when the event arises, they can also trigger a backend demise trigger at our end hmm. with valid uh, proofs being uh, provided, which is nothing but the death certificate. We can then give them, your family, about instructions in terms of how this can be undertaken at their level. Plus, uh, you know, if they need our support from a smart, yellow smarts perspective, we can also provide that at that point in time. Having said that, give us some time. We are in, in doing an intermediate uh, function on saying instead of entire coverage, at least a remote coverage is something which we are planning to kind of launch, which will not have age bars. Yeah, and I think it's also important to kind of clarify. I hope everybody's on the same page about it. So I think yellow services are twofold. One is about making a will, which is available irrespective of what age you are at. Right. It's only the yellow smart services, which is more about post demise transfers and helping your family uh, deal with your assets and then, you know, helping them out with all the legal affairs. That's yellow smart, which has a maximum entry age of 65. So there is a distinction. So if you're only looking for will writing, yellow is still, av still available and accessible. Uh, and as, as, as Nikhil said, but if you're looking for yellow smart services, Karnia. currently it's maximum entry age is 65, but they are looking at alternates available. But Nikhil, just one Absolutely. And, and thanks for yeah. clarifying this because, yeah. uh, you know, I just want to also highlight that we have, uh, because even I missed it, thank you so much for highlighting this because will writing can be done by any age bracket. Yeah. We have customers at the age of uh, as early as uh, 28 to 93 in our user base. And across 40 plus countries who have created wills with us, right? So right. therefore, creating a will can be any, without any age age bar. But uh, yeah, the yellow smart post-demise coverage where we have a financial exposure with respect to the service delivery is where we have capped it at 65 years. Okay, so uh, Gargi has an interesting question. She's asking, so if I use your yellow smart services and I pop off tomorrow, how do you come in the picture and take over execu execution? So one, of course, uh, uh, while when you take up the service, we also uh, ask uh, uh, who the person who will intimate us about the you know, situation of a demise which has occurred, right? So that is a part of the overall offering. So the person who, is, who has been intimated, essentially your executor, can now uh, come back to us when the situation arises saying, hey, this has happened because they also get a copy of the uh, document and you can share a copy of our policy document with your family member saying that if tomorrow something were to happen to you, all they need to do is reach out to Yellow with this document. As long as it's an active subscription, we support you with the overall asset transfer process. Right. So I just have a question here. So if say somebody today were to sign up and get a will made through Yellow, okay. Now, uh, do your family members, like the people who are close relatives, do they also get access to the yellow account in some way to access the will at a later date or something if you if you uh, nominate if right? you nominate okay. if you notify my bad if you notify um, individuals you, you have an option to notify executor witness or fan, you know beneficiaries about the existence of the will it, when you notify it doesn't mean that one it's optional you may choose to do it you may not choose to do it even if you choose only the information that is will be available during your lifetime to any of these role players in your will is that they are a significant role player, be it a executor, be it a beneficiary. That is the only information that they'll be aware of. They won't get the content of the will. Got it. Right? And the device situation arises and if they were to intimate to us, right? It can be intimation either through the app, they can intimate us or our all the bills that are generated by yellow has a QR code. By scanning the QR code, you can trigger a demise. Mm -hmm. And like I said, with right checks and balances and validating the event, then we kind of push all the data to the beneficiaries, executor, whoever it is, about what the latest copy of the will, if you have uploaded with us, and that is available with the family members along with the asset register. Got it. I think that's quite comprehensive. I think we have covered all ground here. So thank you so much, Nikhil, for covering it at such great lengths. And I will just remind uh, everyone. So I, I did see a question where somebody asked if this is not available to Apple users. It actually is. It's just that uh, the tech team needs a little bit of time to activate uh, the right links and everything on the for the uh, Apple users, the iOS users. But it is already available for Android users uh, of the Silver Talkies Club. So as Rushika explained uh, that uh, 
Silver Talkies Club members can avail a 15% discount through the Silver Talkies app and you can access Yellow uh, through the app and it will automatically take you, it's linked to their website. So once you go to the website and you put the uh, coupon code, you will be able to get that 15% discount, but this is exclusively only for Silver Talkies Club members. What kind of data protection or data privacy policies do you have in place? I think that's an important one. No, uh, again, a great question. Uh, one thing which I want to highlight is that we don't talk about values. We don't talk about uh, any of those sensitive data. We don't take passwords, we don't take usernames, etc. All that we capture in our app is only identifiers. And that's up to your creativity to say, how do you want to provide? But don't make it extremely cryptic to say HDFC means ICIC, right? That, that makes no sense. You should capture details to the extent you can say HDFC account ending so-and-so and that's good enough. But having said that, though we don't take uh, any sensitive data per se, we have gone all the lengths and breadths with respect to data protection. What we have done is that we don't read any of your data. Uh, all your data is fully encrypted with highest encryption quality, which is 256-bit AES uh, encryption is what we detect, which is at a device level. Only you can see your data. Uh, we don't... Uh, we can't see your data in any fashion or form. Plus all your personally identifiable information. When I say personally identifiable information, it's your name, phone number, uh, and other identity details. Those are housed in a separate PII, uh, in a zero trust vault. Uh, why we have done this is because one, we are housing all our data in Google Cloud, which it itself has its own uh, protection mechanism. Uh, but even if tomorrow there's a hack, there's a you know uh, somebody trying to pick up the data from there, the, they make no sense of the data unless they also crack into the uh, zero trust wall, pick up your personally identifiable information, match it, and then it try to make sense. After you make sense, all, all that you get is identifiers, right? And that's what we have gone about doing. So you don't need to worry about data uh, here. Uh, the way we are functioning is that you pay for the service. Nothing comes for free from yellow or what you're paying for is what you get as a service. And therefore we don't need to harvest your data. Okay. Nikhil with that, I would like to call it as the end of the session today because we've already overrun time and I have much. Thank you. Uh, and the whole uh, silver talk team and lovely talking to everyone here and, uh, you know, hope to see you soon again.